this design is about not just unquestionably incrementing on JI and RAI, which I believe is one of the bigger problems that we've had with um, the format, is we've had several iterations and a lot of what is put behind certain features has been lost, and now they simply exist because they used to exist. Um, sorry. Um, today, I'm going to be pointing out some of these vestigial problems and the solutions that I've had to them. And I'm also going to be talking about the recipe tree, which is completely new, and the challenges I've had with that. So the first thing uh, that I'd like to say... I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. Um, oh dear, I have to skip two slides. Um, is this this talk is going to have um, gameplay integration if you want to opt in. You can run the command slash trigger EMI, and you will be able to see some um, displays on your own screen as they pop up. If you don't want this to happen, you can just look at the screen. You can use your spyglass, and that is totally fine. But if you would like to see um things as i discuss them so you can interact with them or um to just get a, a view up close without having to hold the spyglass button uh you will be able to um i'm going to get to the slide eventually so yeah um i'm seeing a lot of you running that command now um so i'll wait to run it but this is an example of emi's recipe tree and the basic integration is if I press this command and it'll eventually run, it'll show up on your screen and you'll be able to interact with it yourself. So wait, I'm a little late to the party. What exactly are we talking about right now? Um, I'm not sure what the question is. I'm just going to continue. Um, I just want like a general overview of what you're talking about. I'm going to be talking about EMI, the item viewer mod and the technical implementation challenges I've had. Okay. So um, I'm also going to be having a Q&A section at the end. So if anyone wants to grab a book and write a question during it, they can. And at the end, I'll read them and we can drop them off. So let's start with problems when I go to this next uh, page. Oh, dear. G, can you quickly change pages? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, because we need to move along to the one past the trigger one. Um, I'm going to be showing you a recipe from Greg Tech 6 that is displayed in a modern NEI port fork for 1.7. Um, it, it has some problems, being that it is completely legible. Um, half because you can't see it, it's not on the screen yet. And half because we've had a pretty persistent problem with item viewers in that we've had one way to display variable ingredients. And that is that if you want to show a recipe that can take multiple things, such as a piston, which takes any type of plank, you show one of those examples, and then you rotate through them every second or so. Um, I don't want to burst anyone's bubble, but this is very bad. It is very hard to read legibly and understand what is happening. Oh, there we go, finally. Um, this <laughs> recipe in particular is a bit of a nightmare. Um, the upper left and upper right are tools. If you have any guesses what they are, you're probably wrong. Um, and the three, uh, every piece of metal in this image that screws the plate and the rods are all supposed to be the same thing. Um, the issue is when it's rotating, whenever you first see a recipe, you only get one image. Um, and you don't get to see everything it can be. What EMI does different is it shows um, a static image in the place of tags, which is what Minecraft has provided us since 1.13 to have a good way to view, um, or not view, but categorize different casts of items and use them in recipes. Um, It'll pop up on your screen eventually. Uh, but I'm going to be showing an example of the piston recipe with the planks that I just mentioned. Um, it is, it's much easier to read if you see it like that. 
Um, Uh, an another thing that EMI provides is not only images for tags, but also names for them. Whenever you're hovering over an item in JEI or NEI, as it's rotating through, you see whatever the item is that it's currently displaying. Instead, it would be more useful to see an abstract representation of what you're looking at. In this case, it is planks, and it'll display that on the tooltip. Um, another thing that is very helpful about this is you can click the planks and just view the um, all of the components at once. There we go, it finally uh, is popping up. Um, you can hover, you can see the planks, and if you click on them, it'll show you an actual tag where you can pick your resolution um, whenever the slideshow gets there. I am promise I'm trying to get there as quickly as I can. Um, another small utility of this is you can look up uh, tags instead of just ingredients, and you can favorite them. But uh, this has been a bit of waffling about no nothing. The biggest problem I have with modern recipe viewers is that they're expansive and flexible, and they've served their purpose for over 10 years. But they do something wrong in that they don't supersede the recipe book. If you're a modded player, you may have never used the recipe book, but um, in the side of your screen, a lot of the time, you're able to open up and see what recipes you can currently craft in your current workstation. The issue with um, the recipe book is it doesn't show you many recipes at once. Um, it's kind of hard to navigate, and it doesn't have the same utilities for large amounts of recipes that um, JEI and REI has. So the one thing that the recipe book does have over contemporaries is that it is very easy to quickly craft things. Um, whenever you have the recipe book open, there's a filter for craftable recipes. You can click on any recipe you want, and it'll fill it in the workstation, and it'll craft it. Um, oh, it seems like. G just got timed out. Uh, can someone confirm that I'm still connected? Yep, you all still yeah. connected. We can hear you. Hello, hello. Thank you. Um, where was I? Recipe book, current workstation. Right, right, right. Um, in JI or REI, if you want to uh, quickly craft a recipe, you have to find the recipe. You have to check out its uses or its recipes, and then you have to click the plus button, um, which is provided in the majority of recipe viewers to um, quickly fill a recipe. This was very convenient back in the day when NEI was new and the recipe book did not exist. This was a unique feature. Um, but modernly, you just want to be able to have the same utility as the recipe book. EMI provides this um, with a filter on your screen that lets you view uh, craftable recipes at any time. It's not um, unlike the, the standard view where you get to see items um, and there's only ever one instance of stone, you will get multiple um, instances of the same item if there's multiple recipes for it. Um, the thing that distinguishes them is recipe tooltips. Um, whenever you're hovering an item, you can um, see recipes on it. And if you click an item, it'll instantly try to craft it. Well, there are rebindable binds, but clicking is one of the ways to achieve this. Um, this is not a feature that is exclusive to craftables, though. Another, uh, one of the biggest uses of favorites in recipe viewers is to queue up recipes that you want to craft um, in the future, maybe you don't have the resources for now, or maybe you need to craft more of them. A thing that um, this also solves is if you favorite either the output of a recipe, um, be it in the crafting table or in the EMI recipe view, or if you favorite one of the craftable workstations on your sidebar, the recipe context will be saved with that favorite, and you can perform the same actions you would be able to do on a craftable item. So this 
provides some utility in cases or recipes you can't even do with the recipe book, such as being able to quickly craft um, mushroom stew or even certain types of suspicious stew um, with a single press of a button. Uh, one of the best foods in the game is suspicious stew, but the reason a lot of people don't use it is because it doesn't stack and because crafting it is inconvenient. This is a pretty useful set of features if you know what you're crafting and you just want to get stuff done quickly. And I believe it serves that purpose well. But one of the biggest things people use recipe viewers for is to look at recipes that they are going to craft eventually. And if you've ever played a tech mod or a large progression-based mod pack, you are familiar with a machine that has a dozen or more smaller steps that you need to complete before you can craft a recipe. Um, the solution that EMI provides for this is the recipe tree. Um, I don't know if I am on the right slide yet because I have some pretty serious client lag. Um, but EMI does provide a recipe tree, which will show you every step that breaking down a recipe and at the it's bottom, not showing the, uh, sorry to interrupt, but it's not showing the, uh, thing yet. It's right now it's on dark oak stairs. Uh, thank you. Um, this should probably be the right one. Yes, um, looks like it. and if I hit the button, there we go. The uh, recipe tree not only has every step that you need to complete to craft a recipe, it also shows you the total cost in the bill of materials of a recipe. So for the instance of a crossbow, it shows you how much wood you need, how much uh, iron and string you need, and it shows you all the steps that are needed to craft this. Um, the way EMI achieves this is a variety of methods. Um, a problem that you might run into is that you can determine a recipe for basically any item in the game, but a lot of them are stateless. Or not stateless, they're cyclical. Um, you can craft iron ingots into nuggets into ingots repeatedly. Um, and if a recipe requires iron ingots, you probably don't want to display that it needs iron, nine iron nuggets. Um, the way that EMI solves this is by having a system for defaulted recipes that mod makers, mod pack makers, and users themselves can define to specify what recipes should be automatically expanded in a recipe tree. Um, by default, there is a vanilla uh, resource pack that defines all these recipes. And a lot of the mods that have integration in this mod pack, such as Create and Batania, have full lists of recipes that define down to their base resources. For instance, in Batania, it considers a rune something that you need to craft, but it considers mana steel a base resource that should be considered on its own, rather than saying you instead need iron ingots. Um, and I said users can implement this. Uh, themselves, and it's very simple. Whenever you, you are looking at a recipe, um, there is always a button to either set it as your default or remove it as your default. And this makes EMI a recipe viewer that grows with you as you play. Um, an example that I've said in the past is that in a lot of mod packs, circuits can be expensive when you start to play, and by the end of them, you have them automated. And you don't want to see a breakdown telling you the cost of a circuit. Unfortunately, EMI will let you modify your preferences as you play one step at a time. You don't need to make big adjustments for every single recipe that you look at, and it should be reasonably seamless. However, sometimes you look at a recipe with stuff you've never seen before, and of course the tree uh, is very mutable. You can right-click any crafting step to fold it down to just consider that base resource, you can click on any resource to reassign the recipe that you want to use for it. Um, and you can do um, all that sort of stuff to basically make a tree into whatever step of re recipes you want, either temporarily or permanently. Um, there are some limitations to this system. The recipe tree cannot 
comprehend recipes that have chanced outputs or are generated. Um, some examples of this are armor dying or shield banner copying, where there is um, no consistent uh, input and output state, and instead is generated in code, and armor dying, which could be any number of dies and any piece of armor. Um, another uh, example is in create, for instance, there are certain recipes like fan washing or crushing recipes that conditionally give you an output. Um, if you have a conditional output, the recipe tree can have really no way to tell you how much of the input that you need to craft something. Um, it is not very reasonable to ask a player to uh, bring somewhere from one to infinity iron ingots. Um, other than that, however, basically any recipe that can be reasoned around can be understood and implemented in the recipe tree. For instance, um, here is the Batania recipe for a specific flower. Um, the command that should open this up on your screen may not have actually worked because at the time that I am saying this, there is a Batania integration mod shipped with the pack, but PolyMC and uh, MultiMC have an issue with displaying recipes or not displaying recipes, with shipping certain client-side mods, which that was what the EMI integration for Britannia was. So I'm sorry, you might have to zoom in um, with spyglasses to see this one. Um, but something novel about uh, EMI's handling is it understands the way that Britannia's recipes work. In this instance, it understands that when you craft a rune on the runic altar, if any of your ingredients are runes, those are not simply lost. You get them back. Um, at the end, you can see that you get both two fire runes and um, two air runes or water runes. I can't see exactly um, when you craft an autumn rune. Um, this extends to a lot of other recipes as well. If you look at cake, um, you will notice that the milk buckets tell you they return buckets when crafted with. So the cake recipe tree will have a certain cost of milk buckets, but in the remainders will also return um, buckets. So I am now going to touch on more of the technical aspects of how the recipe tree works. And a lot of the iteration that I went through that did not work. Um, so graph theory. I don't know how to do graph theory. I'm a college dropout. I had to make everything up as I went, and hopefully it was reasonable. So um, let's talk about the um, incorrect but naive, almost canonical approach to analyzing a recipe tree. Um, if you look at a tree, you might notice that certain points in the tree look like smaller trees themselves. Um, in the, the crossbow recipe, um, the tripwire hook could be thought of as its own recipe tree, where the tripwire hook is the uh, thing you want to craft and all the ingredients are below it. This is a reasonable approximation of how recipe trees work, but it has a pretty bad issue in that um, it does not understand partial um, consumption of resources. For instance, the tripwire hook um, section of this graph says it requires um, three planks of wood, and the crossbow's sticks also say it requires two planks of wood, but the total cost of a crossbow is only three planks of wood, because when you craft um, sticks with two planks of wood, you get four, and only four sticks are totally needed for this recipe. So if you did a completely stateless recursive approach to calculating the recipe tree, you would never find um, the correct answer. The initial implementations of algorithms would say that something like this cost five wooden planks. Um, so that's not going to work. Um, but a stateful recursion is, of course, the method you have to go with. On the uh, on any given tree, if you are iterating through nodes, you also have to deal with the problem of recipe outputs amounts. Um, of course, as you iterate down, the amount of a resource you need will probably be increasing, um, and that will increase multiplicatively. 
Uh, and not only do you need to keep track of this, you have to make sure it matches the correct amounts. For instance, when you craft sticks, if this recipe, uh, the crossbow is asking for three sticks, um, you have to understand that a stick recipe outputs four, and um, you have to know that you can only craft in increments of four, and each one of those is a recipe on its own. So instead of saying that three sticks requires three times that it, of its inputs, which would be two planks and total six, um, you need to round up to whatever the nearest um, whole number of crafts is and be able to um, calculate it that way. And the final way that you solve the uh, partial solution is slightly not intuitive. Someone with a more pure math background might tell you that you can just consider consumption as purely partial. Uh, for instance, the crossbow on its own on the left for its sticks wants three. Um, so that's not two planks, that is 1.5 planks. Um, there is a problem with this approach. Uh, in computers, you can run into accuracy problems, which might uh, display misleading uh, trailing zeros or nine nines, um, and that is not great. But the real problem is displaying to a user that a recipe needs 1.5 uh, planks, because that is not true. When you craft this crossbow recipe, you need to have on you three wooden planks, two iron ingots, and two pieces of string. Um, even though you will get some tripwire hooks back, which cost iron ingots and uh, wood, it did not need 1.5 ingots of iron because uh, players craft in batches and they don't have partial units on them. Um, so the naive approach of simply counting partials does not work. However, the other solution that uh, does work for both keeping track of not counting resources repeatedly, but also um, keeping track of the leftovers you get from a particular recipe is simply keeping track of leftovers as you iterate. So when you when the recipe tree realizes that it is crafted more sticks than it needs, it can simply hold on to those and reduce the number that a future craft needs. Um, if we are looking at the tree from left to right, the first craft of sticks it will craft four, but it only needs three. And later, when it is crafting tripwire hooks, um, it can simply reduce the cost of that one stick craft to zero and not have to consume any planks. Um, that was a little bit confusing because, as I said, I'm not great at graph theory. But there are a lot of nuances to how this algorithm had to be implemented, not only to account for um, partial consumption with recipes like that, but also Batania, or well, not specifically Batania recipes, but recipes that use catalysts, runes that return themselves, or remainders that can be consumed later in the recipes. Um, so I am going to open up the um, stage for questions right now. If you want to grab a book from either side of the stage and write down a question, I will um, go through them and make sure to answer them. Um, one at a time, of course. Also, my game is lagging, so I cannot tell if um, how quickly recipes are, or not recipes, questions are showing up, so it might take a moment. I should uh, note that you do have to sign the books before you throw them in. Um, oh, is I believe. this for an A period? 
Yes. Uh, was that not clear? I kind of crashed. All, all right, then. For anyone that is just relog again, then yes, we are in the Q&A period. Um, and you can sign and toss in books to get them answered. All right, so I'm finally starting to be able to read um, some of the questions. So I have the first one that has popped up to me, which is a couple of suggestions uh, for behavior. Um, I'm only going to answer one of them that I could actually answer like a question. Um, and it says, perhaps make the item preview show the possible items from a player's inventory rather than um, a consistent tag image. Um, Personally, I think that makes um, reading recipes a bit too inconsistent based on player state. Generally, you want something that is consistent to uh, look at and read. So moving over to another question, why are leftovers not included in the total cost? Um, in a recipe, the recipes or the, the leftovers from a craft are the number of items that you get back after completing a craft. So in the case of um, crafting a cake, that will cost three mu milk buckets, but you will get three buckets left over. Um, that cost is not part of the recipe. You get those um, items back at the end. Um, here's a design question that it had in tells more of the art aspect. Um, why I pick those specific colors for EMI? Is it because of synesthesia? Uh, short answer, uh, yes. These colors aren't exactly accurate, the ones that the blackboards have made. They're limited palettes. Um, but I don't have a ton to say on that other than, yes, that is correct. Um, do crafting trees not show processing crafts, like mana pool exchanges or create mixing? Uh, that's another good question. Uh, crafting trees can show any processing like that, um, and it does show um, processing. For instance, um, the if I show the slide, the um, runic altar does show it um, as a processing recipe. In the recipe tree, the reason that you simply don't want to consider mana conversion of iron to uh, mana steel ingots is more a decision of preference on what you consider a basic resource. Um, I've done a, quite a bit of playtesting of EMI using various mods like Create and Batania. And one of the misconceptions or that I had initially is that you want to break down a recipe all the way down as far as you can. Um, but that's not always the case. Whatever you're consuming mana steel in a recipe, you probably know how to craft mana steel and you don't want to be told that cost in um, iron ingots. So it's better to show um, what you consider as relatively base resources. Um, it's also why, by default, um, some things in vanilla that can be crafted um, don't show that recipe by default. Um, here's another question. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not showing these on the screen, but uh, I don't think, uh, I think the lag is making it so that when I press them, they, they're not popping up. Would it be possible to show recipes that have a probability based on conditional output in the recipe tree by showing the average and denoting somewhere that it isn't necessarily how much will be needed? Uh, yes, actually. That is one of the stretch goals uh, for EMI. I've had to really quickly make a lot of implementations just to get the mod out for BlanketCon. Um, I was working up until the last minute, and there were patches um, while the con was live. Uh, with new features and improvements. So 
uh, something like that is non-trivial to implement, and it would require some rewrite to the way the recipe tree parsing works. But sometimes you do not need a pure total cost and would just like to um, see all the steps you need. Or you would like an average total cost, and, and scenarios like that are considered and will be um, implemented in the future. Um, the next question is, will there be a way to view a crafting tree for um, multiples of an item, requiring items for three crossbows? Yes. Um, the current way EMI is implemented is the backend completely understands this. And if you made a single code call, you would be able to um, easily uh, implement it and display it. The only reason it's not implemented now is going back to the first point. I haven't gotten to it. Uh, it will take just a tiny bit of development work to put a little amount se selection slider, and I just have not uh, gotten to it yet. But yes, it is trivial to display this on the back end and will be implemented. Um, the next question is, It's it does not seem like there is handling for the case uh, if potion effects are present in the inventory, are there special plans for handling this like REI or others? Um, I am not exactly sure what you uh, mean by this. If you mean having favorites and stacks wrap around the potion effects, I believe that works. Um, but if it doesn't, then yes, it will be adjusted. Did everyone suddenly become small? Yeah, at one point. For a yes. moment. Okay. So sorry, I'm on really bad delay, so I'm seeing everything like minutes later. Um here's a good question. What is the EMI roadmap? Um I can't get back up to the stage. Oh well you can hear me. Um, I mentioned the feature for showing multiple crafts um, at once. I also mentioned um, the other features that haven't got in yet. One major feature that is on the EMI roadmap but is not yet implemented is an abstract form of cost that isn't associated particularly with a stack. Now, I think that those words didn't make sense together. So I think it would be useful for a recipe tree to show you that if you have multiple instances of smelting recipes that you have to use to show you how many times or how much fuel you will need at the end of a recipe. So for instance, if you're making torches, it would tell you that you need however many ticks of um, fuel, probably displayed as um, an amount of coal, like um, one eighth of a piece of coal or something like that, but also um, abstract measurement for mana, RF, other units of energy, time processing, um, I think that could be an interesting route to approach and have it um, sum up at the end of a recipe tree. At the moment, it's not implemented, but I would like to get on it um, eventually. Um, the next question, um, uh, it's the potion effects one again. When multiple UI icons are applicable in a recipe tree, how do they display? Um, multiple UI icons. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that, but I'm going to answer one of them. If in a recipe tree that you have um, multiple ways to craft a recipe, um, for instance, create lets you do shapeless crafting recipes in a basin with a mixer, but it, you can also do these in the crafting table, of course. These are considered separate recipes, and uh, this will be handled however um, the mod pack or the mods have set up their defaults and however you choose the recipes. Um, so the recipe that has multiple ways to be completed is only going to be picking the one of them that it actually is on the pack, even if they seem identical to a user. Um, I have more questions, I assume, but I cannot read them yet. Uh, 
So if there's an op that can come up stage with the mic and read them to me, I would appreciate that. Uh, what I was asking about is like, there are icons for when there's like a tag and it displays a bunch of different items and there are icons for like when it um, returns an item. And I was asking how those would display together. Oh, sure. Um, so when a tag, when an ingredient is a tag, it has a little X-shaped symbol in the bottom left. Um, and when the items return themselves, they have different icons at different locations. As it stands, all of the icons in EMI are positioned at different locations. Um, tags are in the lower left. Uh, variable ingredients are in the upper left. And remainders are in the upper right. So it is completely possible to have all of those um, show up. And they will. it'll just look very crowded. Um, I don't. There are no recipes in vanilla that even use two of them at the same time. And I have not encountered any modded recipes that do either. Yeah, I I was just mostly curious, but that's sure. cool that it will display. Like, you know, looking crowded is a small price. Yes, uh, very not often will you have a recipe that is accepts tags, but conditionally, and also has remainders that vary. Um, I still cannot read the questions at the bottom. Hey, Emmy, I got back in on my alt, so shall I read some of these for you? Uh, yeah, I just answered the one of when multiple UI cons are applicable, yada yada, whatever is below that. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, do crafting trees show processing crafts, like a mana pool exchange or create mixing? Uh, I believe I answered that one, but yes. Okay. Uh... What is on the EMI roadmap? Uh, I answered that one too. Maybe people threw in duplicates for signed and unsigned dress or questions. There are a few duplicates in here, actually. One second. Uh, what versions is EMI available for, or I guess planning to be available for? Sure. Um, currently, EMI is released uh, on the version BlanketCon is, which is 1.18.2 Quilt and Fabric. Um, it will be released for 1.19 uh, next week. Uh, I was intending to release them both at the same time, uh, but my build system got caught on something, and I, don't, I haven't had the time to fix it because of BlanketCon. So yes, next week there will be a build for 119, Fabric, and Quilt. Um, Forge is not on the roadmap, but it may be considered in the future, and it intends to update to all versions as Mojang continues to release them. Cool. Um, how do you handle ambiguous recipes? Uh, can whoever asked that clarify what they mean by ambiguous? It says squid dev, but someone else submitted it. Yeah, it was on the... Uh, hey, I've got a guess. I'm sure. thinking what they're saying is like, you know the mod polymorph? No. Basically like basically recipes that have the same inputs but a different output. Ah, okay. Yeah, I can answer that. Um those are considered separate recipes. Uh in the game they have um different identifiers and when you look at them in uh EMI you will see multiple different recipes that just have the same inputs and outputs. Um the recipe tree works based on these recipes and will show um whatever one you pick. So you could select either one that is in the game, assuming you're able to craft it, um, if you can select it somehow. Uh, I guess that's more up to the uh, job of a mod pack developer to make sure there are no duplicate recipes like that. Will there be a way to view a crafting tree for multiples of an item? For example, required items for three crossbows? Uh, yeah, I answered that one. You did? OK. When there's multiple possible options for an item, is that like uh, an ingredient? Uh, yeah, I can answer that. I didn't. I didn't talk about that yet. All right. So uh, EMI displays items 
uh, as tags when it can or as variable ingredients when it can. And in a recipe tree, uh, you can see at the end of a tree or the crossbar one that was displayed is it asks for planks. Um, but this can be resolved like any other recipe by opening it up and choosing the resolution that you want. On the tag screen, you can pick any of the planks that you want, and that will become the end of the node, and it'll have a little thing that you can use to reassign it. All right, this is kind of a long one. Would it be possible to show recipes that have a probability-based conditional output in the recipe tree by showing the average and denoting somewhere that it isn't necessarily how much will be needed? Yes, I answered that one. How many of these did you manage to answer before they got in? <laughs> I have no clue. I think there's a lot of duplicates, so I, I cleared them initially, but they're back. Okay. How do you go about handling mods with unique or new crafting methods, i.e. create bulk huanting or Britannia's botanical brewery? Sure. Uh, bulk washing and the botanical brewery are actually both uh, implemented uh, already. Uh, the way that it works is depending on the recipe's recipe. Um, if a recipe supports the crafting tree, which is most of them, um, it will define a set of ingredients that are needed for an input and the um, items you will get as a result. Um, if a recipe cannot reason around this, it simply is not supported in the recipe tree uh, and will be displayed some other way. Uh, but a majority of recipes can be represented in the form of set of inputs to set of outputs. Does EMI provide an interface for displaying a recipe at a custom point from my mod, e.g. showing a recipe at a tooltip of item? Um, not, well, yes, no. Um, there are utilities in the API for getting the tooltips that EMI uses to display a recipe. Um, so you could, if you have control of the tooltip that's rendering or the ability to add uh, tooltip components to an item, this is a bit technical on the implementation, but um, yeah, you have the ability to add those tooltips if you want. Uh, so I guess kind of, but there's no um, sim simple method to display it because I can't necessarily reason around what the ideal um, way to go about that would even be, and if it would be useful. When multiple UI icons are applicable in a recipe tree, how do they display? Yeah, I answered that one. You had that one too, geez. They're all duplicates. Uh, what's your personal favorite EMI acronym? Uh, Emmy, Memmy, Emmy. That is a good one. Oh, it's, uh, it's locking up on me a bit. Will conditional recipes, for example, Origins Recipe Power, have an API for integration? Um, I'm not necessarily familiar with the. I'll, um, I'll answer. Recipe. Sorry, sorry, I was the one who asked this question, but basically, it's like the whole thing is like that. It's okay. It's conditional, basically. Sorry for cutting you off, but I just want to like, yeah, like say like you can't craft it unless you're a certain unless you have a certain option available to you. Sure, if you're like a certain species or whatever. Yeah. All right, yeah. Um, EMI has full ability to display recipes like this. Um, the way I would personally go about it was would be to display a recipe and have a an icon or a tooltip somewhere, like a question mark or a conditional or an exclamation point, that when hovered would describe the conditions to you. As a modder integrating with the API, that would be very doable. Thank you. Just waiting for it to load. When is modern industrialization compact coming? That feels like a loaded question. Uh, yeah. Um, the way EMI works is I don't provide the um, the uh, the plugins for mods. Um, I have written some for certain mods, and I've helped other mods write their own. But my time is limited, and the code itself exists in the mods. Um, modern industrialization compact comes when someone writes compat for modern industrialization, be that the modern industrialization devs or someone writes a third-party plugin. Um, I I don't think I can answer it better than that.
uh, from LO0. Showing two planks becoming one stick or three sticks as seen in the crossbow example is confusing. Do you intend to keep it that way or do you see no better way to show it? Um, I'm not uh, sure if... So I, I kind of I kind of got it. So um, two planks bec become four sticks, but the recipe tree only displays three. Um, as it stands, I think that is one of the best ways to dis display it. Um, and I think displaying the actual amount uh, crafted could become even more confusing. Because in the crossbow example in uh, particular, if you showed the amount crafted at every step of the way, it would say something like, uh, read a floor. Oh, I have to show the slide. Um, it would show three out of four in the upper left and one out of four in the lower right. And it's kind of ambiguous. Um, how that applies. Um, the tree itself doesn't have an innate order, and the way it's displayed is just a, a subtree display method, if that makes sense. Are there any plans for handling the case where there are potion effects present in the inventory? I, I'm paraphrasing that. It was a mess. Yeah, I, I think I answered that. Um... Could you go into further detail about how you created the recipe tree for items with non-standard recipes? You do Batania. I, Batania, sure. Um, I kind of uh, touched on this in the past, but the general way that an item or that a recipe dis describes itself to EMI is a set of inputs and a set of outputs. Um, these are useful for several reasons. Um, for one, it needs this information to understand uh, when you look up a recipe, what its uses are, a recipe needs to tell EMI what items it uses so it could hook those two together and display you all of them at the same time. Um, but EMI also uses these to just uh, basically comprehend the items that return from a recipe and that can be nodes on a tree and the ingredients for a recipe that what it needs to split into. Um, so at every step, it is just all of those strung together. Cool. How does EMI represent the amount of mana a Batania recipe costs? Um, it's had a canonical way to display mana in its books and in NEI and JEI and REI, um, which is just an image of a mana bar with some blue filled in it, and that's the same way EMI displays it. If um, I was talking about the uh, long-term plans for uh, the the mod, the roadmap. Um, if eventually resource summing became a thing that was implemented, then that would remain how Batania mana would be displayed, just summed together and displayed in a bar. But of course, that is up to the discretion of whoever maintains the Batania plugin, if that's something they even want, not based on the design of their mod. And the last question that we have uh, saved is, is the recipe tree traversed breadth first or depth first? Um, that is a slightly complicated question because it kind of depends. To get all of the um, remainder math and the amounts uh, correct, some recipes, if you iterate them differently, will request different amounts of resources. Um, so. EMI mostly does depth first. Um, it tries to go to base nodes before summing recipes, but that should kind of be assumed by the nature of the tree being dependent. Um, so yeah, um, I think that is the last question. And unless uh, anyone has any more, I'm gonna thank, uh, thank you all for coming to my talk. There was one more, I don't know if it'll come through in time. Uh, are ideas and PRs welcome? Yes, of course. Uh, EMI is released under the MIT public license, um, and the repository, which is available from the both the CurseForge and the ModRinth page, is accepting ideas um, and pull requests. Also, if you join, say, my Discord server, I have a dedicated channel for EMI where um, ideas could be more thoroughly discussed.
All right, now I, I think have I can... a question. Oh, one more. Does um, EMI support um, REI compat? So, like, uh, if a mod has compat for REI, will EMI load it? Uh, currently, no. And in the long term plans, REI's API is, I believe, around 7,000 lines long, um, which is not something that is reasonable for me to uh, support and extend. And to add on to it, REI's API is constantly evolving and changing. Um, it is possible for someone to make third party compatibility for EMI um, that converts REI recipes to EMI recipes and tries to reason around it. But there are some fundamental challenges with the way that the uh, APIs represent stuff that may get uh, challenging. For instance, um, in the Batania rune recipe, show the slide, I don't know if that's the right one. Um, the uh, runes know that in the runic altar, they get returned. If this was translated from REI, there would be no way to know. So um, the, sh the, the short answer, not now, not by me, but maybe later. Um, and uh, the longer answer is they don't even translate uh, perfectly. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, but as it currently stands, both Create and Botania have uh, compat. Botania's uh, compatibility is currently in the PR stage, and Create's is, I believe, released. Um, several mods on Blinking Con also have support, so uh, it is getting pretty reasonably quick uptake. It's only been up for three days, so yeah. And since that's it, I'm going to thank everyone uh, this time, for real, uh, for coming to my talk. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, speaking to you all, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you, yeah! Yeah!